Today on the channel, we're back talking all things San Diego Comic-Con with a little bit of a miscellaneous reveals. Talking DC and Spawn McFarlane, Star Wars, Rambo, a little AEW, and a whole lot more. And the spirit of Ultimate Warrior will run forever! Back to the channel for another San Diego Comic Con reveals video of stuff I saw out there in San Diego, stuff that caught my eye that maybe doesn't fit into some of these other videos. This is going to be a miscellaneous video, just a little bit of everything else that I was interested in here. And of course, there is so much I could talk about. I could do a hundred videos, but I wanted to put all the kind of scraps, everything that was left that wouldn't work in their own video. Put that all together and that's what we're going to do here today. So let's talk a few different things here and let's start off with some DC McFarlane stuff. Now unfortunately I did miss the McFarlane toys panel. I really wanted to hit those back-to-back -to -back Todd McFarlane panels but unfortunately or fortunately I, it was bad. It was bad. I guess it wasn't fortunately but they had He-Man panel going on so I was at He-Man. That started at like 10 to 11. Well Todd started at 10 30 so Missed a half hour there. Well, then at 11, against Todd once again in the DC stuff, was the Marvel Legends team. So I went to Masters Universe, then Marvel Legends. So that's what happened there. So I did miss the McFarlane panel. So I'm not going to go into a lot of that stuff, but I'm going to talk about some of the stuff I did see out on the show floor, some stuff to talk about here. So, of course, shout out to Entertainment Earth. I did hit up the Entertainment Earth booth over there. Of course, use discount code KYLE. Save yourself 10% on Entertainment Earth on all in-stock items. Free shipping over 59 as we do know. But I did take a look at some of their exclusives. They did have the Superman exclusive. It was kind of a black and white Superman artist edition. They did have a artist edition spawn over there as well uh, with throne and autographs. We saw those before we talked about them. We got to see them in person, which was nice. We did see the black light edition of Scarecrow and, of course, the Joker from DC uh, Multiverse. Now, I did pull the trigger. I did pick up the Joker when I was excited to see that one in uh, person there. So that looked really good. Also, we saw Batman, of course, uh, there as well. I mean, you got to have a Batman in pretty much every single convention, don't you? You pretty much do. So we did see those in the Entertainment Earth booth. I was interested in taking a peek at each one of those. Also, the Boo Berry Jada Toys figure, definitely cool. I did pre-order that on Entertainment Earth, so I didn't pick it up at the show, but I will have that eventually here. But Entertainment Earth had a couple of really good exclusives, and they were also selling other things. Like, randomly, they were selling, they had a list of like 20 things they're selling. Uh, 102 Mick Foley, Commissioner Mick Foley was being sold there. I'm not exactly sure the reason for that, but he was being sold. Uh, so it was pretty cool to see that. And they also had a top section that I got to go up to, kind of look over the whole crowd from there. I think that was a pretty fun deal to see and experience there. Uh, keeping it with DC McFarlane, we did see the McFarlane box set of Batmans. A lot of excitement about this one. Did see it on the show floor. Very, very cool. I did not pre-order this. I don't know if I really need this in my collection. Is I like Batman enough, but I don't know if I need all these different movie Batmans. I, I don't know if I really do, so I did pass on that. It is seemingly sold out at many places, but a very, very cool idea. Would have loved to have seen Adam West Batman in there. I guess it wouldn't fit what they're kind of going for, but there was a Batman movie back in the day, and I always say it, Batman, Adam West, and the Kenner Superpowers, that was my first Batman when I was a very little kid watching you know, cartoons and reruns and things like that, so... Is what it is, but I know a lot of people are excited about that Batman box set. It very reasonably priced at about $120 for six figures in a nice box set. Thought that was pretty cool. And then one, I kind of said I'm probably passing on this. It was a Spawn and Batman two pack, of course. Uh, you know, Todd McFarlane, two of his all time favorites together in a pack. And I said, this Spawn's not a ton different, and that Batman is really not different. But boy, I saw that thing in person. I'm like, you know what? I'll probably end up picking this up. I probably will. I really like Spawn. I like Batman enough. I think it looks cool together. Trigger being pulled. Trigger being pulled. So we did see that as well. And like I said, I missed the panel on Spawn. I missed the panel on all that kind of stuff. So that was a bit disappointing for me. But it is what it is. You think with all the different panels that goes on San Diego Comic-Con, you would think they would say, okay, let's put these toy ones in different days or different hours or at least put some time. Because at one time it was supposed to be Marvel, 
McFarlane and G.I. Joe having crossovers between each other. So I, I think that was our Masters, not G.I. Joe, but it was just a lot of crossover, and that was that was rough. And then AEW crossed over with G.I. Joe. If they could have just spaced these things out a little bit better, I'm sure they'd take my recommendation, but I'm sure people did let them know that there. Uh, but Todd McFarlane did end his with another Kickstarter, which seems weird for McFarlane because he puts out more figures than anybody else in this world. He doesn't necessarily need to do a Kickstarter. And, I mean, it goes back to, does Mattel need to do a Kickstarter? Do they need to do stuff like that? No, they don't, but these are big, big vehicles that make sense for that. I know it's going to be a deluxe figure of Medieval Spawn. It's going to be nice and deluxe. It'll be 100 bucks, something like that. But I just feel like they don't even need to do a Kickstarter. I think Todd's got enough business. I think the Entertainment Earth, Big Bad Toy Stores, uh, all retail, they got enough faith in Todd that he could get this through without having to do a whole Kickstarter thing for it. So more to come on this. I guess we'll dissect it when that time comes. But Medieval Spawn, looking good. I'll probably pick this up. I still don't understand why I didn't get the original Kickstarter. I remember looking at it. I don't know. I just didn't pull the trigger. It didn't interest me. I'm not sure. We'll see what happens with Medieval Spawn, but I think a lot of people are going to be excited for this as uh, one of the good spawns from back in the day that is very memorable to a lot of people. So there you go right there. Now, a couple of other things I saw out there. I got to see in person Paluto from the Toxic Crusaders line. Now, Toxic, Cru Toxic Crusaders, when I was a kid, was one of those things like, ah, I'm passing, didn't like the cartoon, wasn't a lot for me. But the Toxic Avenger, the movies, absolutely love those movies, still love those movies to this day. Uh, but now it's like I got some nostalgia for the Toxic Crusaders. Uh, I see those old figures, much like the old Swamp Thing figures from Kenner back in the 90s, didn't have a lot of love for those things at the time, but very nostalgic now. So I am probably picking up those Toxic Crusader Super 7 figures, those Ultimates. And I'm tempted to get this Paluto from this third-party company. 150 bucks, expensive, but would look really good with those. Did get to see that in person. I thought that looked really, really nice. Same company also had Showbiz Bob. Once again, very nostalgic. Before it was Chuck E. Cheese, at least in my area, it was Showbiz Pizza. And Showbiz Bob was the one holding down the fort for all the video games and pizza and all that kind of stuff. So they did have that. I think this is a new one. They had, I think, a bigger one a couple of years ago. But I thought that was really cool to see there. Haya Toys, another toy line I don't really collect. They also have G.I. Joe's as well. They did show some Rambo figures that did catch my eye. I love a good John Rambo movie. I'm all in on Rambo. Probably not going to pick these figures up, though, but I love a good Rambo movie. Um, but I thought these looked really, really cool. And it looks like more Rambo figures from other property lines are coming and have been coming the last couple of years. So I think that is pretty cool. And then one that really knocked me over, blew me away, and really I had no expectations, didn't know anything about this until I saw it there. It is Syndicate Toy Company. A brand new company, but a lot of longtime toy uh, people from the business are part of this company. So it is new, but it is old in a lot of ways. But they had a lot of deep cut action figures and statues. And I really enjoyed my time checking out some of the puppets and things they had there. Uh, but they had like pumpkin head stuff. But the ones that really caught my eye... Oh, was it Bolo Young? Is that his name? And then John Claude Van Damme Bloodsport figures. Man, that's some 80s goodness right there. Those looked amazing. Those really did catch my eye. And then right in front of him, Ghoulies 2. Are you kidding me? Ghoulies 2, a horrible movie. But if you were a kid in the 80s, going to VHS stores, things like that, you cannot forget the Ghoulies poster or VHS cover with the kind of gremlinly uh, figure green monster coming out of the toilet. Every kid from the 80s remembers that. And a lot of kids never saw the movie, but that image is ingrained in their head, myself included. Of course, I've seen Ghoulies 1. I've seen Ghoulies 2. I love that kind of cinema. And very uh, very ironic because my dad and I were talking the other day, and he was all fired up. He was fired up at his boy, Sven Ghoulie. Sven Ghoulie did two weeks in a row where he showed Ghoulies 1, Ghoulies 2. My dad was having none of it. He hates the Ghoulies movies. Honestly, I could never watch Ghoulies again. They're just awful movies. But to see those creatures as action figures and statues... Man, I thought that was very, very cool. And price point, depending, I may even dabble. I just, uh, it very iconic to my childhood. There's no doubt about it there. So I thought that was funny. Another one that is a movie that I remember as a kid, uh, everybody knew about and stuff, and it kind of went dormant. Everybody hates it, and now all of a sudden it's kind of back, and a lot of people have a lot of nostalgia for it. It is Killer Clowns from Outer Space. We saw statues. We saw figures. A lot of cool stuff if you're into the Killer Clowns. I thought that was a little interesting as well. And then the one at the booth that stole the show for me, probably not going to pick this one up. I'm not a huge statue guy as much as I'd like to be. I just don't have a place for it in my collection. But a Ronnie James Dio statue with a dragon up on some castle steps. 
Man, oh man, playing all the hits with Ronnie James Dio right there. Absolutely love to see that. Give me a little action figure of that, man. I'll be all in on that. I thought that was really, really cool. And just a couple other things in the miscellaneous topic. Star Wars Black Series. How crazy does that be to be miscellaneous? But not a lot of new stuff there. I'm not going to go over it. We knew a lot of this stuff. There was only a couple of reveals. Hera Sedula. Uh, very cool to see Hera. Of course, she's going to be in the Ahsoka series from Rebels, things like that. We saw her Black Series figure coming. Paz Vizla. I did see that on the show floor, but I was also part of the Hasbro Breakfast on Thursday morning. They invited uh, me too, which was very nice to the Hasbro team. Got to see the worldwide premiere of that figure, so that was pretty cool. Definitely be picking both of those up eventually. Uh, but besides that, it was kind of stuff I already knew about for Star Wars, and I did miss the Star Wars panel because G.I. Joe panel got out and Star Wars panel already full, so you didn't even have time to go between those two. So just kind of the way it goes over there at San Diego Comic-Con. Once again, spread these things out. Let people go to all the action figure stuff. I'm sure comic books, I'm sure there was people uh, spaced over on comics, and if movies were there, it would have been the same thing, but is what it is. But that's all I really found interesting for Star Wars for me. And then finally, AEW statues. I guess I could have thrown this in the AEW wrestling miscellaneous video, but statues, something I really don't get, but these are very similar to Unmatched Fury from the Jacks days back in the day. You got Jericho, you got Sting, you got Brian Danielson. Very cool. These look very nice in person. They're not going to break your bank. They look a lot more intricate and detailed. They look very expensive, but I think they're only like 50 bucks, 60 bucks, something like that. So you get a lot of value out of those things, uh, you ask me. So if you're into that kind of stuff, you're into AEW, those may be worth a pickup, no doubt about it. So there it is. There's a little miscellaneous stuff. Not a whole lot in this video. Like I said, it's just kind of the crumbs that were left over, and I wanted to cover these on the channel real quick. So there it is. There's the miscellaneous stuff. Anything catch your eye? Anything uh, knock your socks over? Uh, let me know in the comments down below. Of course, don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Turn on the old notification bell as we got videos every single day and then some. And we got even more content for you, including early access to videos like this over on the Patreon channel. And of course, Patreon, your best way to support this very YouTube channel. You can also support the channel over at ProWrestlingTees.com. Search Kyle Peterson. And don't forget social media, SirPaul64 on Twitter, Instagram, the underscore Kyle underscore Peterson. So for Miscellaneous San Diego Comic-Con Reveals 2023, I'm Kyle. See you guys all real soon.